I'm here today with a very good business colleague of mine, uh, George Blakeway, who has recently completed uh, an amazing adventure as part of being involved in a very diverse team um, with a whole range of skills and backgrounds to make this whole experience come alive. I'm not going to tell you what the experience was, I think that's uh, stealing George's thunder. Um, but I think uh, both myself and the people watching this, George, would be really keen to understand what the, the motivation was to get involved in this, this whole adventure in the first place. Oh, um, I remember some, some years ago thinking I needed an adventure. Um, and for a couple of reasons. One was, I think, quite personal that uh, I've always been someone who likes adventure, likes challenging myself, likes doing things that, um, that, that are something special. And I was looking around for something that, that, that might appeal, but I also, there was a big professional reason for it. And, and that was the main driver. It was really stepping back into a high performance team that operated in difficult circumstances um, and had to cope with uh, a challenging environment. So we had a conversation with, with my wife Heidi and uh, we were looking at various various activities and it was actually her, so I'm going to blame, blame my wife. Because um, she was down in London and in the tube, you'll often see the posters on the side of the, the wall. And it was advertising the Round the World Clipper adventure, the sailing, the sailing race. And she came back and said, you know, you like sailing. Um, what, about, what about a leg of the Round the World yacht race? And Little did she know, within a week I had an appointment booked <laughs> and within two weeks I'd been down for the interview and, uh, and that's when we sort of started talking very seriously about that was the adventure that we'd, we'd pick. Wow, incredible. So it's your wife to blame then? It is, she's entirely <laughs> to blame. Um, she was actually extremely supportive because uh, I was away for the best part of um, over a period of two years doing the training I was away for the best part of, uh, of six weeks at various stages. And then the actual race, I raced from London down to Uruguay. So it was best part of two and a half months I was away. So uh, she was incredibly supportive and, uh, and so were the kids. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she is to blame. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so George, you mentioned that uh, one of the key drivers was about um, being involved in something that had that dynamic around a uh, high performing team, obviously because of what you're about to engage in for such a long time. There was that real need to come together as a team and understand the different dynamics of the team. So. Talk us through some of the real highs and also some of the lows uh, that you experienced during the race mm. itself. Um, actually, the, the highs weren't just in the race itself. The, the highs were often in the way that we came together as a team before the race and the way we trained together. Uh, and there was a big part of that process that almost mirrored the, the classic sort of Tuckman um, uh, experience of forming the team and, yeah. and going through that process. So we did c come together and we, we, uh, we did a number of things to help us in that, in that process. Mm -hmm. The highs of the actual journey, I'm competitive, uh, <laughs> so um, you know, we were focused on trying to, to win. We weren't identified as a team that was likely to win because uh, we didn't have a huge amount of experience. Our skipper, our, our professional skipper, because we are an amateur team, mm -hmm. all amateur sailors, many of us had very little sailing experience before starting this adventure, mm -hmm. but the, the skipper is a professional, but wasn't experienced in terms of ocean racing, so we weren't given much chance of winning. Mm -hmm. And for us to, to, to really get a podium position would have been a big result. Mm -hmm. um, so racing was really invigorating, was really exciting. The challenge of course is that you see everyone at the start line mm. but after about two hours the boats are actually more than five six miles apart mm -hmm. and therefore you don't see each other <laughs> for about six weeks until you start yeah. coming back towards the finish line yeah. and in fact we were so spread out at the finish line we didn't even see the other, the other yachts at the finish line. So you, you're racing against the radar mm. and the positioning 
Um, so that was a real high for me, the, the, the sort of the racing element, and, and uh, we finished third, which was a, a fantastic achievement. Fantastic. Um, the boat now is just finished the Australian uh, leg, and they finished first in that leg, uh -huh. and we are second overall. So we are doing something right in terms of the way we're performing. Yeah. Um, the other highs were the the sense of camaraderie, being with a group of people that were uh, just great fun. Mm. So much enjoyment and, uh, and friendships that were developed over that period of time. And just being on the ocean, being out there with not being able to see a single thing apart from the ocean. Um, the odd whale, dolphins, but it was just this majesty of this enormous mm. uh, planet that we live on and, and how special it is. That was a real highlight as well. And, and what were some of the things around working with uh, the team in, su in such uh, a, a closed environment for such a long time. What, what, what did that teach you? What did you take from that? Yeah, it's because I, I, afterwards I sat down and I thought, right, what have I really learned from it? Uh, and there was a number of things that I think were confirmed to me um, that we're all different and the diversity is so important. So the fact that we were so different, the fact that we were able to draw on different experiences, different backgrounds, different skill sets, um, was fantastic. That was that was really important. But we had to appreciate those differences, and it did take a little bit of also tolerance. And that's the word that I also majored on when I re reflected on what I've I learned. And I didn't perhaps consider that so much when I'm looking at team performance in teams um, mm. with, 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 with our clients. And um, that element of appreciating other people's point of view, recognising it's different, but then also learning to tolerate it and not looking to change their mind or, or, or sort of put it on the table to discuss it because we have a difference. There are times I think where we just have to accept that they see it that way, I see it this way, and it's okay, that's mm. fine doesn't have to be solved and and that that element of you know what it, it, on a boat is an element of physical space that you feel constrained mm -hmm. and you're constantly bumping into each other mm -hmm. and you're, you're wet you're cold it's almost trying to get the kit you know the, the, the sailing gear off and they're elbowing you in the face and it's there's a lack of space and the boat's moving around it's at an angle mm -hmm. so everything's uncomfortable and you just have to learn to just to, to accept that kind of mm -hmm. stuff but it's also you know, that's almost a metaphor for the for the behavioural stuff. Yes. For the fact that yeah. we we also have to accept that someone's just wound me up by by what they've said or how they're yes. behaving or or what they're not saying. Or perhaps I don't think they're pulling their weight. And, but you know what? You just accept that they're tremendously tired. They're probably probably feeling a bit low. They're yes. missing their family. And what actually they need is a bit of a handhold. Not mm. not a come on. You're not pulling your weight. Yes. And it's recognising those moments and 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 working with it, that's, that was a huge part of it. And I don't think that's any different to sitting in a boardroom or sitting in a concept, contact centre mm -hmm. and appreciating that someone's come into the office with, with, with some issues that mm -hmm. they've perhaps had at home and asking them to ignore those issues is, is ridiculous mm -hmm. because it's part of us, it's part yeah. of our, our, our life. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think this uh, point you make about tolerance is really interesting. So again, going back to the situation that you were in, um, there couldn't have been much time for sleep, maybe short bursts of sleep, and we all know that uh, sleep deprivation can make us a little less tolerant <laughs> of you know, the, the tiny things that, that, that wind us up suddenly yeah. from being so big are massive now on, yeah. on a boat. But you, you, you mentioned about the, um, the coming together before the race and the work you did there. Um, and you mentioned to me earlier that you'd um, you talked to them about DISC. Did that help going into the, the race, George? So the team having a bit of an understanding about how they behave and how they're likely to behave then as a team? It, it did. Um, th th there was a real powerful coming together on the team, the team uh, uh, event, and just certainly facilitated that. We mm -hmm. we did the the exercise where we got people sort of standing around a room, yeah. and and looking at things through a different lens, and just appreciating the diversity because we had a fairly even spread. Yes. Interesting. Our skipper came out um, as an S, mm -hmm. and he's very humble, mm -hmm. uh, shows vulnerability. 
and um, was very much interested constantly on how the rest of us were feeling and mm. how we felt about it. And initially I thought, gosh, we're about to cross an ocean and put our lives in, in this person's hands. Mm. And, and does he have that strength of character? But my gosh, it, it reminded me that whatever star you are, it's nothing to do with strength of character. Yeah. Um, and he demonstrated this wonderful ability to connect with us all, which was his real strength. But he also demonstrated this ability to step into other styles when he needed to. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of times when he had to get shouty on the boat and had to be very, a very different character, but yeah. was still authentic to himself. Mm -hmm. And I think us understanding where he was coming from helped our relationship with, with him in particular. Mm -hmm. But also there was a language on the boat that also helped us. Mm -hmm. um, did we always refer to it? No, but it just became a little bit ingrained in the way that, that we, we, we looked at things mm -hmm. and appreciated that we, we were all different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're right, it, it, it is in a team environment, be, be it on a boat or in a boardroom, it's having the, the raising of the self-awareness to understand that I am different to the person sat next to, to me, I am different to the person uh, working next to me on the boat. And sometimes our levels of tolerance mm. can be raised or lowered, I think depending on maybe mood and how you are that day and some of the, the tasks that maybe you're having to do that day. Completely agree. That, that there's, you mentioned sleep earlier. That The longest period of sleep I had over six weeks was two and a half hours in, in one un, un, sort of undisturbed burst because you're doing four hours on, four hours off. So by the right. time you've got you know, your, your wet kit off, yeah. um, eaten something, gone into your bunk, you, you feel like you sort of you get woken up and, and you feel like hang on a sec I've just been you know and it, <laughs> just this you, minute got yeah, to sleep yeah that's what it feels like and you're back up on deck at two in the morning and off you go again <laughs> and you know we all come to work having had a lack of sleep and it's recognizing that you know what I am likely to be a bit moody or a bit short and of course you can control and reframe that behaviour it just takes a little yes. bit harder yes you know, the work takes a little bit harder yeah. um, and there is undoubtedly that that diversity on the boat definitely brought strength. Mm. But we have people from every different nationality and culture on our boat. We have people from Saudi Arabia, people from Europe, people from Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, it was deeper than just just that sort of, you know, the way we like to operate. There mm -hmm. were some real deep ingrained values that were quite different. Mm -hmm. But what we were able to do is find the set of values that we all agreed on. And we did quite a lot of work on the team build weekend about looking at our, our values and our mission and what, what actually we wanted to achieve. And interestingly, the one that came out top by a long way was stay safe. And, and you <laughs> yeah, know, you can't, yeah. That. And it, you know, it was, uh, here I am this competitive person and I, you know, I want to have fun and camaraderie, but consistently we all agreed, you know what, we want to all come home mm -hmm. safe. And that mm -hmm. was everything we do, we look after each other, both physically, because there's clearly a big risk on, on, on the boat, but also metaphorically in terms of or, or, or thinking about each other's, you know, how they're feeling, and that was a big part of the way we, we approached performance. And I think that's a lovely phrase, uh, again, George, to bring into uh, the, the, the business side of, of what you and I do, is that looking out for each other, and I know there's a lot of teams we work with, and sadly that's not there. They're very fragmented, they're very siloed as individuals, and trying to nurture that through some of the, the tools that we have available with DISC and the five behaviours really helps them to recognise that this is not just about me, this is about something much bigger than me. And I would imagine there was a great sense of that on the boat. It's not just about these individuals, it's something much bigger than that, yeah. the team performance. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's, there's an element, particularly with the long ocean crossings, that it is an endurance test. Mm -hmm. So 38 days at sea, with losing, losing weight dramatically, <laughs> uh, tiredness, um, it is a human endurance as well as a physical uh, uh, effect of actually changing sails and, 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 and moving the boat as fast as we can. So that, that endurance factor does rely on a huge amounts of that, this is about behaviour, mm. um, not just the skills of sailing this as fast as we can. And I know that the, the work that you do, so much of, of, of what you do is that initial phase of, look, we need to get to this place before you're even starting to talk about process and starting mm -hmm. to talk about how we can do X better. Because at the moment, you, you haven't created the right culture within your team to even have those conversations. Yeah, spot on. And that's what yeah. we've, you know, we've got to work with so many organisations is convincing them 
before we start all of that, yes. we need to do this. Yes. And they, well, well, I want to move on to, to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. You're not going to fix it permanently unless we do this other stuff. Yes. And once they've done it, they get it. Yes. Actually, fixing the problem becomes quite easy yes. because they've done this this sort of base yeah. work of you know what you you know you mentioned the word trust. It, it, it's this 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 yeah. kind of relationship that we have. So George, just to sum up then from, from this whole experience, um, what has it taught you overall about you and um, what has it made you think about in terms of team performance, maybe in a slightly different way than before you, 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 you did the race? Um, what did it tell me about me? Good question. I, I think I always knew that we we're capable of extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think individuals are capable of extraordinary things. I think when you come together as a team, you can go way beyond that. Mm -hmm. You can go way beyond the, what you thought was possible. Mm -hmm. and, and it reminded me that that's the case, when you, you, you have the, the power of the team. And I know that might sound a little bit glib, and, and, but it generally is true. It yeah. generally is true. Not just achieving physical activity, but that emotional support that you need. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it taught me that I'm capable of more tolerance than I perhaps gave myself credit for. I'm quite a strong D. Yes. Uh, I'd like to think that I've got the emotional intelligence, having worked in the business, to, 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 to adjust and to flex my style. But I'm still, I am who I am to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me that I do have that tolerance, but I need to work at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was inspiring. It was inspiring to see how others coat and uh, I felt proud to, to do what I did. Um, what I learned about teams, it really was the basis of everything is putting the team ahead of your own, the own reasons to be on that boat mm -hmm. and therefore agreeing what we all wanted to achieve individually and collectively became more important mm -hmm. and uh, that bit about this staying safe was so important uh, but we also had other uh, objectives underneath that which was going fast as we could, mm. trying to get on a podium, trying our very best, <laughs> yeah, but also not, not beating ourselves up if we weren't, because yeah. um, sometimes it's down to you, you're breaking something on the boat or um, being knocked over. We, uh, the, the scariest moment was at about two in the morning at about 600 miles off, off Uruguay, we hit something, hit something very solid. Um, uh, I was in my bunk, instantly woken up, people that were on deck were knocked over, people in the galley were knocked over, and we all out of our bunks instantly, looking at each other, think, what, what's happened, what's happened? And we think we'd either hit a container or a whale or something solid because we instantly come to a, to a halt with a massive crack. Mm. And the first thing you do is, after the initial sort of shock of looking at each other, we lift yeah. all the boards on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the boat and go into the bilges and check the keel boat, um, bolts, that the keel hasn't been damaged mm. and that we're not having any, any ingress of water. And it was those moments that, as soon as we had the kind of looking at each other for about two seconds, then we just went into emergency mode and everyone was doing their job mm -hmm. and checking and, and checking everyone was all right. And it's moments like that that, fortunately, I think was fine. Yeah. But it's moments like that that you realise this team is trained and trained and knows what they're doing mm -hmm. and just does stuff. Partly, you could argue, for one, one's own safety, but partly <laughs> just because that's what we do collectively as a team. Yes. Because we, yeah. we know we, we all have a role to play. Yeah. Um, and that was actually, on reflection, whilst it was really quite scary at the time, it was the only moment I felt genuinely, oh my gosh, yeah. because <laughs> if we're taking on lots serious. of water, there's a problem, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it was the only moment I felt, gosh, but after the, uh, that shock, and we checked, I think it was fine, obviously you had to continue then to check every 20 minutes, we had to lift the board to check the, check the you know, water ingress. Um, it told us that we can cope in, in, in adversity and you know what we knew that if we had to hit the, the life rafts we knew what we had to do and we'd do it so uh, we felt confident in each other. Yeah. And you got back safe and in one piece? Yep, I stone on a half lighter <laughs> so um, still one piece but uh, lost a lot of weight uh, and it was wonderful to get back, fly back um, into, into Birmingham and all the family were there at Birmingham Airport and oh. uh, so, uh, yeah, I was in one piece and, uh, and completed safely. And actually, everyone in our crew, uh, touch wood, whenever it is, we'll use a part, um, uh, has still been safe and we haven't had any severe injuries or significant uh, issues. And a long way that continue for the rest of the, the, the voyage. 
Well, George, uh, massive congratulations. I'm, I'm absolutely in awe of what you did. Um, and uh, thank you for taking some time to share your experience with us today. Thank you. Perfect.